Well, I guess even before they got close, they would probably see that, you know, that famous picture of North and South Korea, right? Where it's like, there's light on one side and there's no light on the other. And I was just looking at a map and I saw like the border of like US and Mexico. And it's just, it, it is quite strange to see this straight line in a world of no straight lines where there's such a difference between these two areas. Yeah, exactly. So in, in a part portion of the book, I identify places where you, at night, where you can detect boundaries between countries, because normally those are just, uh, they're on, on your schoolroom globe. But yes, between North and South Korea at night, uh, South Korea is lit, lit with, with civilization, and North Korea is dark. And so there is a geopolitical boundary visible from space. There's another one visible from the daytime, which is between Israel and surrounding regions. It's a fascinating reality there. Uh, that, <clears throat> that boundary can be identified because Israel irrigates. There's basically desert climate throughout. Israel irrigates right across the border. They do not. So you see this green um, dust, this boundary between what is green and what is sort of dusty brown. And so, but then you look at the GDP per capita difference between across those borders there and in Korea, um, it's a factor of 10, right? So, so we have evidence of economic disparity visible from space. That's extraordinary. What's, go what's going on? Aren't we all the same species? Isn't it? Um, and I would have thought that when COVID came around, I tweeted, I was early, I was early out of the box, March 7th, maybe March 6th. I tweeted, um, uh, the, the coronavirus is like an invading alien species. It doesn't care what side of those lines in the sand you were born on. It only cares that you are human and it is an enemy of us all. And it will require invocations of the methods and tools of science to combat it and not magical thinking. And so I keep thinking to myself, a common enemy to our entire species would be the most potent force for us to bind together to fight a common enemy. But there was the coronavirus and that's not what happened. And I was very disappointed in us as a species about that. In fact, yeah. it seemed to divide us even more. Yeah, it's true. I mean, we've always seen those great Hollywood movies like Independence Day where we come together when there's that alien threat. So you kind of hope, exactly. you hope that we would, but yeah, I guess we kind of didn't in that case. You know, I've been having these conversations, Neil, for 11 years and, you know, with, 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 with some of my greatest guests on this show, after talking for two, two and a half hours, they almost always come to a conclusion that you came in the book, which is this simple statement of, we are all one. And it's fascinating to me. I never saw this coming when I started broadcasting. And it could be a bodybuilder, you could be a scientist, an activist, an author, or whatever. And oftentimes, it comes to the end of it and they say, you know what, before I go, I just think we need to remember we're all one. And yeah, it, it's- In the chapter called Body and Mind, I explore how much effort we put in to make ourselves look different, not only from one another, but from what we might natively look like. I mean, look at look at what goes on. People with straight hair will curl it. People with curly hair will straight it, straighten it. People with dark hair will lighten it. People with light hair will darken it. Uh, your muscles aren't big enough. You go to the fitness center. Your other body parts you get surgically. And so again, what, what would an alien think if they see us doing this? Look at look at the beauty industrial complex and what power they have over what we look like to ourselves. The alien would probably say, my gosh, these humans think that they are ugly beyond repair, given how much effort they are putting in to change what they look like right when they wake up in the morning. And that, that's, a, that's a cosmic perspective on our conduct that I think can offer some insights into like, what are you doing and why? Have you really thought about it? Yeah. Or are you, are you just part of a, a, a system or, with no sense of what's driving it? You're just in the masses doing what you're told by others, even if you're not conscious of it. These are outlooks. Uh, by the way, why am I an astrophysicist talking about any of that? Because 
That's what it looks like when you're scientifically literate. When you're scientifically literate, you, you step back and say, well, why is it that way? You ask questions yeah. because you're curious about the engines of what's happening and the, uh, and other drivers and forces, be they hidden or, or, or obvious. And so you arrive at these uh, perspectives and these conclusions that you wouldn't otherwise see or know. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real. And he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four week crypto boot camp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.